Algebra 2 honors, 8.1 midpoint and distance formulas. How do we find the midpoint? Well, there's a formula. I don't really think it should be used. Does it teach your students just follow the formula and you don't have to think? Uh, a very bright student pointed out to me the midpoint formula just means take the average. So 3 plus negative 5 over 2 is negative 2 over 2 equals negative 1. And I realized that's a really, really good way to remember it. So that's the first point. The other one, of course, is the y. <clears throat> we just go negative 1 plus 5 over 2 is 4 over 2, which is 2. So the midpoint is negative 1, comma, 2. Now I'm a big believer in double checking things. So I often do what we call a quick and dirty graph. And by that I mean Put in the first one, three negative ones about here. Put in the second one, negative five, fives about here. And put in the third one, negative one, two about here. Does that look like it's roughly the midpoint? Yeah, it does. So I, I can't overemphasize this. I think just doing a quick check is a very wise thing to do. An easy way to, to make sure you did the problem right. Um, nobody ever asked the midpoint question on an ACT or something like that in a nice, easy, straightforward manner. That would make life too easy. What they do do is things like this. Here's the center, three, negative two. Here's an end point, negative two, comma, one. We have some sort of a circle here. And the question is, what's this other end point? Which I'm not going to make it a perfect circle, but i got to be able to do a little bit better than that. Yeah, I'll have to do. So algebraically, what we're looking at is 3 equals negative 2 plus the other end point over 2. Then you solve that and get that the other end point is... I feel like I'm doing this wrong. Eight. Yeah, that makes sense. And if you look at the y value, negative two equals one plus x two over two. And the y value is negative five. So this point should be about eight, negative five. However, I don't I like doing it that way. I like doing it this way. From negative 2 to 3 is 5 over. And from 1 down to negative 2 is 3 down. And if we do that again, 5 over. So 5 over from 3 is 8. And then go 3 down. 3 down from negative 2 is negative 5. That works too. So I like to look at the graph and be intelligent about it. I really can't tell you how many people I know just blast it out algebraically and do it completely wrong and don't realize it because they're not thinking. They're just trying to do the problem and get on with their life. So how about the distance between these two points? Did that quick and dirty graph earlier, 3, negative 1, and negative 5, 5. Is there a formula? Of course there is. Do we memorize it? I wouldn't. I mean, if you really want to. And again, a lot of students are just very good at cranking out formulas, which really isn't what I would call intelligence. The distance formula is just based on the fact that you can draw a right triangle here. And again, I look at this, I go, well, negative 5 to 3 is 8. So 5 down to negative 1 is 6. That should be a negative 1. Not sure what happened to it. And if we look at this and say, oh, that's a right triangle, then we know that 6 squared plus 8 squared square root equals 10. Any way you want to do it. 
and it doesn't matter. So again, you could use a formula if you want. I just look at this and say, well, this is 6. This is 11. So we should get the distance between those points is 6 squared plus 11 squared. Square root of 157. If you're going to do it with formulas, at least be smart enough to label the points. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Four minus negative two squared plus negative two minus nine squared, which I just showed is thirty six plus eleven squared, which is a hundred twenty one, gives you this, which does not reduce. So that's distance to midpoint formula. They're not all that challenging, uh, but they're a great example of something that if you're a typical math student, you've been doing it. A very simple, non-understanding way. You really need to think about what these mean. They're great problems that pop up often on standardized tests, but you actually be surprised how often you'll need to say, well, I'm here and that's there. What, what's about halfway across? And, and use some intelligence to figure it out. That's it. Good luck.